I've come up with a really easy character build that anybody could throw into the game and start playing nice and easy. So my goal with this video is going to be to make sure that you can play Daggerfall so you can start the game, you can find a village, you can start joining factions, finding quests, and exploring the game on your own without help. So if you don't have Daggerfall Unity, the first thing I'm going to tell you is to make sure you are playing Daggerfall Unity. My tutorial and everything I'm going to be showing you applies to that. The original game has a lot of bugs and a lot of glitches. It's still playable and it's still good. I played it for years. But Daggerfall Unity is the way that you play Daggerfall. So if you don't have that, please install it now and I'll show you how to do that. If you already have Daggerfall Unity installed, skip this part. So you're going to go to Google. You're going to type Daggerfall Unity. It should be the first option that comes up. You're going to scroll down to Releases. Then you're going to scroll down to where you see the release that matches your system. You're going to click on it, and you're going to let it download. Now while it's downloading, go to your desktop and make a new folder. Call that folder Daggerfall Unity. And then once Daggerfall Unity is done downloading, you're going to open that. And then you're going to drag all of those files into the new folder you created that's on your desktop. And then from that folder is where you're going to play Daggerfall. Now that we're playing Daggerfall, we're going to be at the main menu here of Daggerfall Unity. Uh, we're going to take a look at our settings. So the ones on screen here, you can copy if you like. A lot of them are up to personal preference. We're going to go to Advanced. You want to make sure that Smaller Dungeons is enabled. And we're also going to be starting in the Starter Dungeon called Privateer's Hold. So if you want to follow this tutorial all the way through, make sure the Start in Dungeon is enabled too. The rest of the settings are mostly up to personal preference, but if you want to copy mine, I'll show you all of them here. These are my gameplay settings, interface, um, enhancements, my video settings, and my accessibility settings. So feel free to copy those if you like. Now we're going to play Daggerfall, start new game. Now this is the part where you pick your race. I'm going to recommend that you go with Skyrim, the Nords, Breton for the High, Ro uh, High Rock for the Bretons, uh, High Elf for Somerset Isles, or the Red Guards in Hammerfell. Now, the reason I would suggest these races is because the Breton has a 30% Magicka resistance. That's very good for this game. There are a lot of enemies that use magic. The Nords, I would recommend them because they have a 30% Frost resistance, and that's like having magic resistance in a way, but only to frost-related magic. Red guards for their bonus damage and bonus chance to hit, and high elf because they have high intelligence and they are also immune to paralysis. So for this tutorial, we're going to be going with the high rock for Bretons. But feel free to choose any race you like. This part is very important. You're going to want to choose from the list of possible classes to play. This top one, you're going to want to scroll down to the bottom, and you're going to want to choose custom. You're going to want to choose custom every time you make a new character. So for primary skill, short blade, restoration, and we're going with critical strike. For major skills, we're going to be going with dodging. When they're attacking us, they will miss, because we have a high dodging skill. And then we're going to go with destruction, to use, uh, you know, fire magic, shock magic, you know, destruction magic. And then we're going to go with mysticism, for teleportation. It's very important for uh, dungeon delving. You're never going to find your way out of a dungeon. You're always going to want to use teleportation. So for minor skills here, we're going to pick thaumaturgy. Thaumaturgy is the magic school that involves levitation and also um, the Mages Guild and a lot of temples require you to level your Thaumaturgy to rank up in their faction. 
So after thaumaturgy, we're going to go with medical. Medical is related to when you are waiting or resting uh, in a dungeon or out in the world. Medical means how much health and stamina and magicka you regain during that resting period. And then we're going to go with running. Now, the rest, I'd say, are really up to you. We're going to pick a couple language skills here. Now, the language skills mean that if you have a high skill in this, in these three options, etiquette, streetwise, uh, and orcish, that means that um, bandits, mages, and wizards, and the like, human enemies, when they're attacking you, you have a chance to pacify them. That means they will stop attacking you. Uh, the same goes for orcs and the orcish skill. Now, there's also dragonish, um, impish, and daedric. Those are also considered languages, and those apply to other enemies. We see a lot of bandits, and we see a lot of orcs. That'll help pacify them very often. Now, the most important part is the, advantage, the special advantages and the special disadvantages. We're going to go into edit special advantages, and we're going to do increased majory by three times intelligence and spell points. And then we're going to select immunity. We're going to do immunity to diseases. We're going to select immunity again and immunity to poison. And then we're going to select immunity again. Now, immunity to paralysis. Now, if you selected a high elf, I may have mentioned that the high elves are naturally immune to paralysis. So if you're playing as a high elf, do not select immunity to paralysis. Leave that one out. Close that. Now we're going to go to special disadvantages. You're going to want to forbid any weapon type that you don't plan on using. So you see for building this class, I did select short blade. That means we're only going to be using short blades. So I'm going to forbid every single weapon type that is available here, except for short blade and hand to hand. We're going to forbid material. We're going to forbid orcish. And then we're going to forbid armor type, chain, forbid armor type, leather. The reason we're forbidding chain and leather is because you're going to find steel and iron and silver very early in the game. So chain and leather can be eliminated. You won't need them. The reason we're forbidding orcish is because late in the game, Start finding ebony and daedric armor, you're also going to be finding orcish armor, but the orcish armor is going to be incredibly rare, and you'll be relying on other armor types by then anyway. So it's safe to, it's mostly safe to forbid orcish. And now you'll see here max hit points per level. We're going to make that as high as it lets us go. Now it won't let you continue if this dagger here is in the red. A name for this class, if you want. You can name whatever you like. I think Spellblade suits it well. So then we're going to hit exit down on here and okay. So now this dagger is still in the red. You're going to want to lower your max hit points. Make it as high as you can make it, but just low until it's not in the red. You're going to want to choose your character's career path by answering these 12 questions. This is very vital to the, uh, character creation. Now, most of the questions can be up to you, but the ones that are that are important, that need to be answered a certain way, I'll let you know. You might not get the same exact ones as me, but there might be the same answers. It's just the question reworded in a different way. Destruction. Now, what motivates you into a life of adventure? This is one of the ones where you're going to want to pick either riches or helping others. Because riches grant you 500 gold at the start of the game, and helping others grant you a 10 plus reputation to commoners. That means when you're asking people for locations of things, they'll mark it on your map or tell you exactly where it is. We're going to select helping others. I don't think this one matters, but we're going to select learning economics. Since childhood, you saved 100 gold pieces. That one could be up to you. Okay, now this one's very important. Any of these questions, at any point you see the answer, an ebony dagger, you're going to have to select that ebony dagger. It is vital to the game. You need that ebony dagger. Gratitude for services rendered. The emperor gave you an ebony dagger. As you grew older, you received additional magical training in... I'm going to select... This one could also be up to you, but I'm going to select... Uh, restoration again. So this one, I actually know that 
as a childhood nickname, your nickname was Rabbit, gives you a plus in jumping. Quicksilver gives you a plus to speed. Guppy gives you a plus to swimming. Scrapper gives you plus to hand to hand. And Monkey gives you plus to climbing. This one doesn't matter too much. I'll select Daedra. What the scribble types you have to. Yeah, I don't think this one matters either. Intimate friends with a. I don't think this one matters either, but we're gonna select Mage. So this one does matter a little bit. What gods, if any, do you worship? I believe that selecting one of these gods could lock you out of joining other temples, possibly. So if you select none, you can just save that decision for later. You can still select none here, and you can join any temple later on. And also selecting none gives you a plus 10 respect to scholars. So there's that. You have the most trouble with, so for this one, you always want to pick, you have the most trouble with avoiding diseases. The reason is because earlier, if you remember, we're immune to diseases. We're never going to get disease. So, of course, that's going to counteract this. You have the most trouble avoiding diseases. We don't because we're immune. So your reputation should now look something like this. Commoners higher, scholars higher, and the rest are unchanged. That means uh, common folk, NPCs walking around, and uh, merchant shop owners and tavern owners, bartenders, they all have a lot of respect for you. And everybody else is just unchained. I'm going to hit random a couple times until I get a good one. I'm um, just left a fake. That guy's pretty funny looking. All right, so for this part, right here you're going to see damage and two hit. You're going to want to keep hitting re-roll until you see damage plus one and two hit plus one. There we go. You're gonna have a couple extra points here. I recommend you dump most of them into intelligence for spell point casting. Agility is related to your ability to hit the enemy. So that's a high enough. We're gonna drop a couple into strength here. And that looks good. Now this is mostly up to your preference. You can dump more points into whatever skills you feel like you're gonna need the most. Obviously we're gonna be using short blade a lot. So I'm gonna fill that as much as I can. Put them into destruction. And now down here, we're going to put points into medical. And then we're going to continue with that. Now, for this reflexes, this is basically your difficulty slide. And then you get one last look at your character here. And you're in the starter dungeon here. Before you do anything, please save your game because the character creation you just spent making you're going to lose it if you die there's no auto save at all so save the game before you move forward please we're going to take a look at the controls here so i recommend that you copy the controls that i have here take the time to see if you're comfortable with it and and get used to the controls now we're going to open our inventory here we're going to equip our ebony dagger I just went through most of the dungeon and I've cleared a path to the exit and I'm just going to show you how to get straight to the exit. If you want to explore the dungeon and kill some enemies and get some loot, feel free. In fact, that I would suggest you do that, but just make sure that before and after every fight, you save your game because you don't want to lose progress. You see, just clearing the dungeon, I've made four saves. In order to heal, you want to hit the camp or the rest button. For me, that's the P. If you saw my controls earlier and copied them, then it'll be P for you also. And you want to rest until healed. You want to do that every chance you get. You can't do it if there's enemies nearby. So you want to clear a room or you want to backtrack and go to a room you've already cleared before resting like that. And you'll see I've healed up completely. Now I'm going to show you how to get to the exit from where we started. You're gonna keep going straight down this hallway until you can't go straight anymore. <clears throat> you're gonna go up these stairs and then you're gonna go through this door. 
and there may be some enemies in here and there's also along the way through the hallway i just went there'll be some enemies too so some rats some imps so be prepared to uh have some combat you're gonna come through here you're gonna go up these stairs and then you're gonna stand on this little throne here you're gonna stand next to it you're gonna click that lever And then you're gonna come up here, go through this hallway. And now you're gonna look for the first door on your right. And that'll be here. And there we have our exit. Now, the first thing we're gonna do, now that we've left Privateer's Hold, is you're gonna open your travel map. For me, that's the end button. You're gonna click on the Daggerfall region and you'll see where we're at is where this uh, red plus is located. You're gonna click find, and you're gonna type in the name you see here, Gothway Garden. You're gonna hit enter, and you're gonna hit yes. And now this might look confusing, but it's really not. All you wanna do is either camp out, you can use camp out option to travel for free, or you could use the stop at night for inns option and then you're gonna hit begin and it's gonna send you straight to Gothway Garden that's gonna be the first city that you're gonna work in and get quests in so now that we're in Gothway Garden you can pull up your map so the first thing we want to do is we want to sell some of our gear quick tip here if you press the F3 key which is for me you'll activate your info mode now you'll notice if you aim at a building and you right click on it from a distance, you can see what the building is. So you can see I've tagged Superior General Store here, and you'll see the places I've tagged are now on the map. So here's a, a map of the stores in Gothway Garden. Now, the best stores to sell loot at are ones where when you enter the store, it says the first sentence of the description of the store says Rusty Relics. When you see Rusty Relics, that's how you know this store is going to buy, spend the most money on goods. Now, we're still in info mode here, so I'm going to switch back to grab mode with F2. And we're just going to sell all the junk we found and aren't using from uh, Privateer's Hold, the first dungeon. So, if you went and killed people in the first dungeon, you should have some loot to sell. This is the guy you want to sell it to. And that store is located here in Gothway Garden. You'll see it's called the First Class Supply Store. Now, the best stores for you to buy items at will be the stores that, at the beginning of the description, when you enter it, it says incense and soft music. That means that this store is going to be carrying and selling the highest level gear that is available to you. In order to buy things from the store, you want to click on the shelves and just to keep in mind also, each shelf should have different items. Yeah, each shelf will have different items. So before you wanna go through with any kind of purchase, look through each of these shelves first. The incense store is located right here. That is the Superior General Store. And that's where he's located. Now we're gonna enter the Mages Guild. This is the blue building right here, located in Gothway Garden. Most cities and towns uh, may have a mages guild, some won't. Some towns are very small and don't have anything. But Gothway Garden's got just about everything. We're gonna head into the mages guild here. And we're gonna speak to this man with the brown hood, Peristair Wicksmith. We're gonna talk to him. We're gonna ask him to join the guild. I was making character creation I chose uh, a couple magic skills, so I'm skilled enough in magic to join the Mage's Guild. Uh, and you should be too. And now I'm in the Mage's Guild. So we're going to walk past him. We're going to make a left here. We're going to go up these stairs. We're going to talk to this woman. We're going to click Make Spells. Now, the spell we're going to make is Teleportation just gonna click on it like that and you don't need to mess with any of this for teleporting of course we'll name it teleport bye there we go 
Now, you'll notice when you go to your grimoire, for me, that's the Q key, you'll see your spells here. Now, we started the game with Shock, Chameleon, and Slow Fallen. You also may start with them. But now we have Teleport. In order to use Teleport, select it. The first thing you want to do when you enter a dungeon is set an anchor. And now, later on, when you're done exploring your dungeon, you're going to use Teleport Spell again. When you're done exploring a dungeon, you click Teleport, and it'll send you back to where you left your anchor. You can also talk to the leader of your local mages guild here, and you can get quests from him. Now, when you click on Get Quest, he's just going to give you a random quest. Now, it might not be a quest that you want to do, or it might not be a quest that you're able to figure out. So before taking any quests from them, just make a save. I have a mod that gives me the option to select any quests that they're able to offer me. Now, if you don't have this mod, he's just going to give you a random one. And if you don't like the random one he gave you, just reload the save you just made and try to get the one you prefer doing. Well, like the Mages Guild, you can also get quests from the people in the Temples here and the Fighters Guild. And they are guilds that you can join just like the Mages Guild. And they also offer quests. But the most common place that you're probably going to be getting quests at is the tavern. So these green locations are the taverns. And you can go into any tavern and we'll make a save here just in case, like I said, we get a quest that we don't want to do. And if you just take turns talking to these people, one of them is bound to offer a quest. Usually it's this guy in green. Nope. Oh, yep, the guy in green and this guy here in brown, they almost always offer quests. But you could just take turns talking to each of these people, anybody you see in a tavern, um, and you can get quests from any of them. Occasionally a shopkeeper will also offer you a quest. That depends on how high your merchant's reputation is. And by the way, if you do join the Fighters Guild, and you are in the Fighters Guild hall, you are able to sleep and rest for free. Now we're gonna try doing a quest for the Fighters Guild. You'll see here that part of this quest, he's telling me, you will need to travel to Deerwick, which is three days travel to the Southeast. So we're gonna leave Gothway Garden here. We're gonna open our travel map. We're gonna click find, and we're gonna just type in the name of that town, Deerwick. We're gonna have to find the house. So, like I showed you earlier, you can use info mode to click on these different houses. And you'll see most of them are gonna say residence. But eventually, you'll find the right one that says, what I'm looking for is the Mastersley residence. But if you're having trouble finding it, you can talk to an NPC, and then you ask them about locations, then you say general, and then you click the name of the residence of the location you're looking for. And either they'll tell you or they won't. One of them eventually will. But when they tell you, you'll find, when they give you the direction, when they say it's west of here or if it's northeast of here, what you want to do is keep spamming on it. Keep clicking the response until you see that she's marked it on your map. Now, when you pull your map up, it'll show you exactly where the location is. Before we enter, because I know I'm going to have some combat, I'm going to save the game here. Now, you don't need to bother talking to the people that are in the house. You just want to go room to room until you can find the wild animal. Oh. It's dead. And now we're going to go back to Gothway Garden and we're going to turn in our quest. And we're going to get our gold. So that's our first quest done. Now you can always open the
quest journal with JK. And you'll see we have a main quest still to attend to. The first few steps are kind of confusing, but you're just going to wait. You're going to play the game. You're going to join factions. You're going to do quests. You're going to earn money. You're going to earn reputation. And you're going to just keep playing the game until a woman named Lady Brisiana sends you a letter. Now, when you get that letter, it's going to give you a location that you got to meet her at. You go and you speak and you meet with Lady Breeziana. And then when you're done meeting with her, go back to doing your own thing. Go back to joining factions, go back to doing quests, go back to making money. And then once you hit level three, you'll get another letter from another woman. And that'll be an invitation to a wedding. And from there, it should be very self-explanatory.